Starting in this four o'clock hour, we have some breaking news for you. A mm. multi car crash. This is on eastbound I 90 in downtown Spokane, now blocking two of the right lanes and the Division Street exit ramp. There are many injuries, but it's unclear how many there are. According to Washington State Patrol, drivers can expect delays. This is still a developing situation, and we will continue to update you with the very latest throughout the broadcast and the evening. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Crumb 2 News First at 4. I'm Tom Sherry. It's good to have you here today. Well, just hours ago, the governor announced new guidelines for spectator events and religious fa and faith based organizations. So under these new guidelines, a vaccinated section can now be seated at full capacity at Washington churches as well as spectator events. So this is big. Our Ian Smay is live at Union Stadium, which is the brand new stadium for the Meade School District, talking about these updated guidelines. Hi, Ian. Yeah, we are live at Union Stadium, where Mead High School plans on having an in-person graduation next month. And now the major change from Inley's announcement today is new capacity rules regarding separate sections for vaccinated and unvaccinated people. Outdoor facilities can now add vaccinated sections until their capacity hits 50% or 22,000 people, whichever is less. When it comes to indoor facilities, it depends on what phase the facility's home county is in. Vaccinated sections can be added to indoor facilities until they reach 50% capacity or 2,000 people, whichever is less. For those in phase two, a vaccinated section cannot exceed 200 people, and for those in phase three, that limit is raised to 400 people. I told Spokane's interim health officer, Dr. Francisco Velasquez, about Inslee's announcement earlier. But I think the goal is really not necessarily to segregate those who are immunized, but to really encourage all that can to get immunized. Velasquez also said he thinks that Inslee's decision will help encourage more people to get vaccinated so they can once again participate in large events. He also says that continuing to vaccinate as many people as possible will be key in getting Spokane's COVID-19 numbers down and beating the current spike we are seeing. Now, this is all coming out the day before Inslee is set to announce which counties are going to roll back to phase two. Velasquez told me earlier that he hasn't heard or seen any indication from the governor's office that Inslee might be planning on pausing county rollbacks. In Mead, Ian Smay, Creme 2 News. All right, Ian, thank you very much. So as he just said, tomorrow morning is when we expect that update from Governor Jay Inslee about which counties could move back or forward in those phases. Yeah, we're not going to know for sure until the announcement is made, but we can get an idea of our odds. Mm -hmm. Our Casey Decker now is breaking down the data for us tonight. Casey, how is it looking? Well, simply put, Tom, not that great. We know we've had bad numbers for most of the last month, and those trends don't seem to have gotten much better in the last few days. So right now, at this point, you guys are probably mostly familiar with the requirements to stay in phase three. We just need to meet one of these two metrics, either have fewer than 200 COVID cases per 100,000 people over a two week span, or have fewer than five COVID hospitalizations per 100,000 people over a one week span. We were told by the governor's office last week that those spans will be both up to and including yesterday, Sunday. So how are we faring? Here's what the health district data says. SRHD reports 1,505 cases in the two-week span between April 19th and May 2nd. Now, given the population of our county, that's a case rate of 287.9. That's way over the limit, so it looks pretty clear that we won't meet that threshold. So then, what about hospitalizations? Well, SRHD reports 28 hospitalizations in the one-week span between April 26th and May 2nd. That's a countywide rate of 5.35. So it's a little bit closer to our target than the case rate is, but still close doesn't mean much here. We need to be under five. And from this data, it appears we will not be. Now, a couple of important facts to point out when looking at this data, some qualifiers here, the biggest one being, we don't actually know for sure if the data that the state is going to be using will be the same as the data that SRHD is reporting. In the last county evaluation, the data did not match up. SRHD told us they weren't entirely sure why that was the case and they're working on remedying that with the state. But for those who are hoping that maybe the data will be wildly different enough to prevent a return to phase two, last time the state data was actually worse for Spokane County than the health district data. And similarly, the state could end up using different data range, date ranges or different population figures than we did, but it seems pretty unlikely that any of that would really make much of a difference. So unless Inslee moves the goalpost tomorrow, which for what it's worth, he's done that several times before. It's not looking good for Spokane County. Odds are we'll be going back to phase two on Friday. Tom, Whitney. Mm. 
All right, thanks very much, Casey. Well, in the wake of that super spreader event that happened in Republic, Ferry County now has the highest COVID-19 case rate in all of Washington. So the Northeast Tri-County Health District is now reporting 106 Ferry County residents have tested positive for the coronavirus since that super spreader event, which was the weekend before April 12th. So to put all of this into perspective, there are just over 7,500 Ferry County residents. That's according to the latest census data. One new death has also been reported. Now it's unclear right now if it, that particular death is officially tied to that super spreader event. We did reach out to the health district but have not yet heard back. In the meantime, the health district also said seven people have now required transport to other hospitals. It's unclear right now the total number of hospitalizations, but we're also waiting for the health district to confirm that. Ferry County, though, does have the highest case rate adjusted for population in the state and actually ranks among the highest nationally as well. Well, this is some disconcerting news. CVS and Walgreens have wasted more COVID-19 vaccine doses than most states combined. This is all according to government data obtained by Kaiser Health News. The data shows at least over 182,000 dose doses were wasted as of late March. Of those wasted doses, CVS was responsible for almost half, and Walgreens had almost 21% of those wasted doses. While it isn't exactly clear why these two pharmacy chains have been responsible for wasting so many vaccines, the CDC said the losses were to be expected with a vaccine rollout of this size. Now, the, Was the University of Washington is requiring students on all three of its campuses to be vaccinated against the coronavirus before they can start school in the fall. So they are now joining WSU here in the state to require students to be vaccinated before they can ever come back to campus. Students will need to verify that they've been vaccinated before fall quarter. There are exemptions, of course, for medical, religious or philosophical differences. If students are not able to get vaccinated where they currently live, the university also will provide vaccination to students once they arrive on campus. Mm. All right, we're going to take a quick break from the headlines to talk about weather. We certainly were enjoying the weekend weather, <laughs> oh my. which kind of stretched a little bit into today. Still really nice out there. It was absolutely beautiful. We've seen some clouds that have rolled in and I want to throw out some love, by the way, to uh, Cataldo Catholic School. I was the uh, uh, auctioneer for their big auction on Saturday and it was done virtually and, you know, had to do all kinds of things differently, but uh, raised a lot of money for the kids and everybody was super flexible. Okay, let's talk about it. Sunny sky. Is expected Tuesday. We'll actually begin to see the cloud cover clear out overnight. Partly cloudy on Wednesday, and then we'll look for showers Thursday night and Friday. Could actually see temperatures for Wednesday and Thursday climb into the 70s. We've got a little rain, and we haven't had much rain during our spring. Our March and Aprils are much wetter than what we've received so far, so we're down a couple of inches for sure. But a little bit of rain now occurring across areas of eastern Washington. 63 right now, wind out of the west southwest at 18 miles per hour. For the weekend, we're talking about seeing temperatures uh, in the lows, or actually for tomorrow, uh, in the 60s this evening, an overnight low of 40. 67 the high tomorrow, again with sunny skies, and then we'll see a chance of showers over the weekend. Temperatures back into the low 60s. I'll check those 70 degree temperatures for you later this week, coming up in a few minutes. Sounds good, Tom. Thank you. New at four today, Mary Cullinan, who is mm. Eastern Washington's first female president, has died. That's according to interim president David May. Cullinan took that position back in 2014. She resigned last year amid some financial challenges and a vote of no confidence from the faculty Senate. So following her resignation, Cullinan served as a special assistant to interim president May for a five month period. University officials did not release a, release a cause of death or specify when Cullinan died. And Bill and Melinda Gates are getting a divorce. The two announced their separation over Twitter just today. In a statement, they say, quote, after a great deal of thought and a lot of work on our relationship, we have made the decision to end our marriage. The couple has been married for 27 years and have built the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation together. The Washington Department of Corrections will allow in-person visits to inmates for the first time now in over a year. Those visits will officially start May 9th. With the number of vaccinations rising, the department said it was able to finalize a plan to reopen structured in-person visitation. 
So approved visitors will now be able to access an online appointment request to schedule their visit and incarcerated individuals will be able to have visitors once a month for one hour. Visits will be scheduled by cohorts as an outbreak mitigation strategy. All of those visitors must schedule their visit. They must pass an in person COVID screening test and undergo a temperature check there at the facility. Well, if you haven't heard, Spokane is hiring. There are signs nearly everywhere with local shops seeking new employees, but very few people seem to be interested in applying for these jobs. Spokane business owners told our Amanda Rowley this employee shortage could have something to do with people earning more money on unemployment way. now that it includes the Federal CARES Act enhancement. But we're taking a deeper look into why people are not looking for work. One local economist says the decision not to go back to work right now is being complicated by a couple of factors. It's been challenging finding, uh, uh, you know, associates to come either back to work or new associates to come and work at the Davenport. It's a national issue. And again, it tends to be, seems to be more focused in industries that were low pay to begin with. It's also been popular opinion that people aren't looking for jobs. They aren't returning mm -hmm. to work just because mm -hmm. that maybe that unemployment check is mm -hmm. a lot more than they would be getting working. Is that true at all? So to find out why some people are not looking for work, you'll want to join us tonight for a full report that's coming up on Creme 2 News at 6 o'clock. Mm.